shares of Facebook have fallen about 14% since its initial public offering in the month of May. The social network's experience has other companies questioning whether GoPublic is really in their best interest after all. For a look at the IPO market, we're joined by Brian Hamilton. He's CEO of SageWorks and he's in New York. Brian, good to see you again. Of course, we saw you the morning that Facebook was going public. Mm -hmm. At the time, you were pretty bearish, felt it was overpriced. You were dead right, it appears. Um, <laughs> Have you been at all surprised at how far down the share price has come? Well, I've been right so far. We don't know what's going to happen over the next year, but I appreciate it. Um, I'm not surprised at all. The issue with Facebook is not the fundamentals. It's a good company. They've got good brand. They've got profits. They've got sales. But really, it was priced high, uh, sky, or sky high, just way too high. And that's really their issue, to me at least. So if that's the case, is it uh, a situation where they've obviously had their fair share of troubles, it's been a headache for them, there's no question, but is that enough of a headache to keep others out of the market, not wanting to IPO? It's a great question again, and no, Facebook is an aberration, right? It's one company, it was a big IPO, no question about it, but the IPO market follows the financial markets. When the financial markets are good, IPOs go well. We've had 70 IPOs so far. It's a frothy market. It's a good market. So Facebook is an aberration. It's a one-time event. It was an important one, but it won't reverse everything. So it won't reverse everything, but at least sentiment has been that people have been, if not scared out of the market permanently, at least willing to put things off. Is that just based on the financial performance that we're seeing right now? Yeah, maybe. Here's the thing. What we've got to do is step back. If you're an entrepreneur, if you're an original investor in a company, you've got to, when you go in public, you go out, you get a good value, a fair value for buyer and seller. If you're good on that valuation line and you know what you're doing, you've got good underwriters and you, you plan it the right way, then there's no fear of going uh, public. Absolutely not. Facebook's one company. But you really have to step back, and you've got to make it good for both the buyer and the seller. And that was the problem with the Facebook IPO. So let's say it's hard to say companies similar to Facebook, because as you say, Facebook was its own going concern. But if you see other companies that perhaps are approaching a size and situation where they'd like to go public, they're in Silicon Valley, but perhaps they enjoy having some, uh, some autonomy over themselves. They don't want the headaches. They, they like the freedom, perhaps, of making their own decisions. Is that the other piece where they just stay out and find funding elsewhere? Right. No question at all. The times have changed, no doubt about it, versus 5, 10, 15 years ago, 20 years ago. That's why the number of publicly traded firms keeps going down, Pamela, because uh, if you are an entrepreneur and you go public, you're going to have a lot of costs, you're going to have a lot of regulation, you're going to have lots of you know paperwork. Um, you're going to be subject to the whims of what's happening in Greece and other parts of the market that you can't control. So right now there's a collective pause that's documented by the fact that the number of public companies keeps going down. It's not just around one issue. It's around a multitude of issues. And remember, there are other alternatives. You can sell the company. You can sell part of the company. You can get private equity. And remember, there's a mega movement right now. It's a big one where there's secondary market exchanges going on where if you own part of a private company, you can sell shares now. 20 years ago, you couldn't do that. So really, we're kind of bearish on publicly traded or you know the IPO market long run, not because there's anything wrong with it, but because people are finding good alternatives as entrepreneurs to going public. Do you see those alternatives just continuing to gain steam? I mean, are they what sort of environment are they in in the sense that their power seems to be increasing, I guess? Right. Great. Uh, very early, but very strong. Look at second market. Look at what's going on. 20 years ago, if you owned shares in a private company, you were stuck, right? You couldn't do anything with them. You could use them for wallpaper or, you know, tr showing your friends. But there wasn't much you could do with a stock certificate in a private company. You couldn't use it as collateral for a loan. But right now, there are secondary market exchanges being set up, as you know, and we're at the very beginning of that. I really believe that. The market is very adaptive, especially financial markets. That's why we've got NASDAQ. That's why we've got the New York Stock Exchange. They were all formed as a response to conditions. So the secondary market exchanges are going to grow, at least I feel that way, because of just a lot of factors, and we're at the very beginning of that. Okay.
Well, Brian, we'll have to leave it there, but uh, very interesting to obviously keep an eye on that, and we'll have you back to talk more about it. Thanks for your time this morning. Sounds great. We're joined by Brian Hamilton. He's CEO of SageWorks, and he joined us from New York.